Well, hello. Hi, David. How are you doing? William. I'm Dave Kenninger. This is my brother in song. Bill Miller. Bill Miller. And we're here to talk today to talk to you about singing. <laughs> Something that you can do for your entire life. We're going to remind you what a great thing, what a great hobby, what a great passion singing is. And how are we going to do that, Dave? Well, first, I think we ought to tell them a little bit about ourselves, being singers. Okay. Grew up as a singer, just like you, sang in those high school choirs, sang in church. Uh, did, did you do that? I sang in church. Yeah. I sang at home. I sang in the school. I sang in a quartet. Until they kicked you out of church, right? When I lift up my head, he lifts up my heart and my troubles. It's all away, away, my troubles. Just all away, 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 away. No, I sing. I still sing in a church okay. choir. It's a great place to sing. All right. If you have any questions at any time, just hold up your hand, and we'll we'll encourage you to question as we go along. Mm -hmm. So you talked about some of the benefits or some of the good things about singing, Dave. And yeah, I want to go over those. Singing again. is free. Singing is inexpensive. You have a voice that costs you nothing. You have your your body parts, your vocal cords, your ears, your brain that help you hone the tone. That's right. The voice is portable. Portable. It goes, Very goes wherever portable. you go. You don't have to buy a carrying case. It's always ready, almost always ready. You ought to warm up a little bit. It'll last you your whole life. Do you uh, know one of the best things about singing, though? It's good for you. That's right. It's healthy. It's something that makes you feel good. It's scientifically proven to lower the blood pressure, to release tension. There's something called oxytocin. Do you know what oxytocin is? It's a hormone. It's, it's a, a hormone. Yes. You get better grades if you sing. You get higher SAT scores and you involve yourself in less risky behavior. It's now, a different you would know, type of memory. You would know better than I do what that risky behavior might be. But you <laughs> might, newborn babies and mothers bond better when mothers sing to their infants because of this oxytocin. One of the things the brain does is uh, enable you to hear and sing at the same time. Otherwise, you couldn't harmonize. Uh, it, it's, hone the tone. That's right. He, he calls mm -hmm. it honing the tone. Okay, well, what do we talk about next? But most important, singing is... It's fun. Fun. And you, you can do it any place, any time, your whole life. There you go. <laughs> so, so, Brother Bill. Yes, sir. <laughs> Brother Bill, why don't we tell them a little bit, what is this barber shop okay. stuff that we're talking we're about? We're going to talk about it a little bit, just a little bit, not mm -hmm. enough to bore you. But it is one of the American musical art forms. The other two primary uh, musical art forms that came, that were born in the USA are gospel, and you've you've sung that or you've heard it sung. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away. Good and jazz, which started out at Dixieland and has morphed into all kinds mm -hmm. of different stuff. Barbershop has not strayed that far uh, uh, from, from its original uh, basis. Uh, David, do you want to tell them a little bit about what makes it different from well, some other Well, first, first, barbershop, let's, let's make sure that they know that barbershop is for both males and females and... Sometimes and mixed. Mixed groups. Mixed courses and quart or quartets. Mm -hmm. yeah. And generally, when you're in a choir, uh, you, you probably do do some a cappella singing, and that's often... Soprano on the top, carrying the melody, and then there's alto, tenor, and bass, or alto, baritone, and bass, carrying the harmony parts. Well, in barbershop, that's a, it's a little different than that, and that's one of the distinctive features of barbershop. Can I tell them why? Go ahead. Because I'm dying bar to. Bar barbershop, the melody is not on top. There's oh. always one, sometimes two parts, harmonizing above the melody line. Above the melody above line. Above the melody line, there's always one, sometimes two parts, harmonizing below the melody line. Mm -hmm. And the voice names are different. But the voice names are the same, whether these parts are being sung by males or females. And Dave, you want to tell them what the yeah. parts are named? Whether it's a male group or a female group, the lead carries the melody. Above the lead is the tenor. And the tenor harmonizes above the lead the foundation is the bass, 
And then there's, then there's a part that goes below the lead and above the lead, filling in all the parts for the four-part chord. It's the other part. It's called kind of, baritone. It's kind of goofy. So you have tenor, lead, baritone, bass. Barbershop singing also has very singable melodies, very memorable melodies. When I get older, losing my head. In fact, you could, once you learn barbershop technique, you can harmonize to almost any singable melody song. That's right. And, and because barbershop is meant to be sung by average singers, uh, most barbershop songs you'll find are not too rangy. They're not too high and not too low. Well, it's a great, great morning, your first day in heaven, when you stroll down the golden avenue, there are mentions left and right. It's, it's meant to be sung by everyone. It's meant to be sung by people. Something that everyone could sing. Yes, the, the, the people that have average range. In the, so you just hooked on them. average, aren't you? No, I'm not hooked on average. So now what are we going to do? Well, you were going to tell them lots. There's also something about seventh chords. Lots of dominant seventh chords well, in well, barbershop. There's one of the distinguished characteristics of the styles of so the songs we sing is they're arranged with a lot of dominant seventh chords and we talked about a dominant seventh chord and you were going to mm, sing one. I, I can't sing a chord. No, sing, you were going to sing the notes <laughs> that make up the chord. Oh, okay. So it's, oh, like uh, solfege. Um, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do yeah. is the scale. Everybody knows that, right? Yeah. And, but the okay. dominant seventh chord has the do. Do, mi, sol, te. That's it. Do, mi, sol, ti, flat. And that try to score chord up. creates that rub that people go, oh, that's a pretty cool chord. Oh, that's good. That's good. And it pushes you to want to resolve to the major. Do, mi, sol, do. But the, the dominant seventh also creates more natural harmonics or overtones than any other chord that you would normally sing. So that when you hear somebody sing a dominant seventh chord and sing it well, you'll get to hear four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe eight notes. Uh, some create some uh, obviously in out of four form. voices. Out of four voices, you get to hear more than mm, more than overtones. Four So, so we talked about uh, a demonstration of barbershop. Are you going to tell them what's coming up? I'll tell you what. Why don't we show them what okay. we're talking about? Okay. Good idea. We have a quartet for them.